Brahms, Strauss, German scholar, Mozart, Beethoven. Now, I love the works of the Grand Masters, but one thing that I noticed when I was a guitar student was that the composers who were in the piano books, like Schumann, Mozart, Beethoven, they weren't the same composers that were featured in my guitar books. And all the composers that were writing for orchestra, I couldn't find them at all in my guitar books either. And when I later on, when I started to study classical music history, all of the composers that were featured in my classical music history textbook were the ones that I just mentioned, the grand masters like Beethoven or Chopin. And I couldn't find any mention of the classical guitar composers in the history books. So today we're going to take a look at those classical guitar composers that any classical guitarist learns from a young age. And we're going to listen to a little bit of what they composed. We'll start in the 17th century with the Baroque guitar, which only has five strings. In Spain, Gaspar Sanz was a priest and church organist who also happened to write three methods for the early Spanish guitar. His Canarios is probably one of the most well-known early guitar works. Over in France, in the court of the French kings, we have Robert de Vizé, and he was later rediscovered in the 19th century by another guitarist. Moving on towards the 18th century, as the classical era begins, the guitar becomes more popular among amateur musicians, but less so among the nobility. The guitar also transforms and becomes more like the modern guitar. It has six strings, and it loses the courses, or the doubles strings. During the later half of the 18th century, the greatest guitar composer and virtuoso of the 19th century was born, Fernando Sol who is also known as the Beethoven of the guitar, is perhaps also the most well-known classical guitar composer. His work spans across all levels of guitar technique, from virtuoso guitar sonatas all the way to beginner studies, and even the youngest students of the classical guitar will encounter his works. While he is more well known for the huge variety of music he wrote for classical guitar, Sor also wrote symphonies and concertos for other instruments. However, towards the end of his life, he became a little bit more bitter because the, the publishers asked that he write more easy works for classical guitar, whereas he was more inclined to write more difficult music, like the works he wrote when he was younger. Another Spaniard who was in Paris at the time and became friends with Sor is Dionisio Aguado. Aguado wrote numerous guitar studies and contributed to the advancement of guitar technique. One of his improvements including using the fingernails to strike the strings of the guitar, instead of the fleshy part of the finger. You can also see in the photograph of Dionisio Aguado that the guitar is being held by a sort of guitar holder or stand that Aguado invented. He called this the tripodium. He was also one of the composers to switch from using tablature which is a system which has lines for the strings and represents fret numbers with numbers on the lines, to the five-line standard notation with the treble clef. The most well-known Italian composer, again for guitar players, is surely Mauro Giuliani. While Sor and Aguado were based primarily in Paris, Giuliani moved from Italy to Vienna in Austria to perform, and while he was there, he became acquainted with Rossini and Beethoven. interesting note about Giuliani's style is that he wrote in the bel canto style. He was probably influenced from the operatic singers of his native Italy. But there were also Italian composers in Paris, such as Ferdinando Caruri, who was one of the most prolific composers for classical guitar. His opus numbers go up to the high 300s. Students of the classical guitar 
will quickly encounter one of his many etudes for the guitar. But he also wrote many concert works, including two guitar concerti. Another Italian guitarist and composer, who was somewhat overshadowed by Carulli during his time in Paris, was Matteo Carcassi. He moved to Germany before settling in France, and was known as an excellent performer. His 25 studies for guitar, Opus 60, have lost nothing today in their didactic value. As composers in the 19th century moved from the classical era towards the romantic style, the classical guitar composers essentially stayed in the classical style during the 19th century of, say, Haydn or the early works of Beethoven. However, there is one composer in the 19th century who is an exception to this rule. Johann Kaspar Merz was an Austro-Hungarian, and he was thoroughly influenced by the romantic composers of the piano, such as Schumann and Chopin. So the story goes that as he was ill, after having nearly been poisoned and nursed back into health, he would listen to the works of the romantic masters being played by his wife on the piano. This influence is shown in the work of Barden Klanger, or Sounds of the Bards, and the evocative titles of each of the works. Later on in the 19th century, the classical guitar tradition was continued in Paris by Napoleon Cust, who was a student and friend of Fernando Sarr. Although during Cust's lifetime, the guitar was on decline and becoming less popular, his guitar works actually demand a very high level of virtuosity and skill from the performer, a lot like the earlier works of Fernando Sarr. The end of the 19th century and the turn of the 20th brought two huge changes to the evolution of the guitar. The guitar basically transformed from the smaller romantic guitar to the modern classical guitar that we know today. This is due to a redesigned guitar by Antonio de Torres, who created the modern form with a superior and a louder sound quality. At the end of the 19th century, there was also one of the most important guitar composers of the late Romantic period, the Spanish composer Francisco Tarrega. As well as championing the guitars by Torres, he also improved and modernized the technique of the classical guitar. For example, he championed the use of the footstool. Another composer of the Romantic era for the modern guitar is Agustin Barrios Mangoré, a Paraguayan guitarist. He was also an extremely prolific composer and performer who toured all across Latin America. And some of his recordings survive to this day as a testament to his virtuosity. Thanks to the work of the guitar virtuosi of the 20th century, the guitar is now a mainstream instrument and is written for by all sorts of classical composers, mainstream and guitarists. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to classical guitar composers especially of the classical period. And if you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.